Today I'm going to review the trail cameras that I use to give me the intel that I need to be successful come hunting season. Stay tuned. Okay, so here we are. We have two Browning cameras. I will show you the model number. I will open them up and actually show you the model number. Now, I've ran these cameras about three years. This is eight megapixels. It will take up to a 32 gig card, uh, which I like to run on occasion. Sometimes doing still pictures, you just miss them with, uh, you know, unless it's a super, super high-end camera, but you're gonna pay five or $600 for it. Uh, you miss them. So sometimes I'll run video. Video choose, does two things, actually. It chews a lot of batteries and it chews a lot of memory space on an SD card. So I always end up running the higher end um, SD cards, plus the newer cameras that are coming out, they call for the 32 or 16 gig cards, cards anyways. They're gonna, 32 gigs will eventually uh, be a small card here in a couple years. It's electronics, it's technology. Uh, it's changing about every two to three years, you know, a lot. So let me open this up. Let me show you the model number and I'll talk to you about it a little bit. So you can see there's the model number. Now, this is the predecessor to this camera. These were really good um, in the sense that, number one, they were cheap. I got these cameras for $75 a piece off eBay uh, three or four years ago, and I just ran them like dogs. Uh, I, I run them not quite year-round, but really close until the bucks lose their antlers. And the reason I do that is because initially I'm doing it for hunting season and intel so that I can have a successful hunt because the last thing you want to do is get in there, hunt your stand, booger the area up, leave a bunch of scent, spook the does away. Once you spook the does away, the bucks will not come around. So these worked really nice. I would check them seldom uh, because every time you go in and check trail cameras, you're leaving scent as well. But again, these were eight megapixels. They, they, they were, the price was right. The pictures were right. And in fact, this camera here is not the one that I use for my last live stream. This is, this is the camera. This is the higher end one. I'll show you the model number in case you decide to pick one up. Okay, there's the model. Um, they were about the same in price. I think I paid 90 a piece for these on eBay. If you shop around, you will get them at a better price. I mean, you could, I could have paid as much as $125 for these if I hadn't shopped around. I bought about 10 of them. I like to run a lot of cameras. The more intelligence that I have, the better off I'll be. I will tell you one thing about running trail cameras in general, and this doesn't have anything to do with these Browning cameras, is that if you run trail cameras, what I figured out, I've done the math, about two weeks of running trail cameras, you should have about 90% of your bucks on camera. Uh, and the reason I say that is because you're always going to get your contender deer, contender bucks that move in to try to breed your does. So, and that's just from my experience. Um, I do like the, the updated version a little bit better. This is 10 megapixel. It is a little bit better picture. Now, having said that, to the untrained eye, you're not going to notice the difference between 8 megapixels and 10 until you blow it up. And, um, you know, this tends to get a little bit grainier quicker than the 10. So it does make a little bit of a difference. Um, you know, the the bar pretty much anymore is 10 megapixels. I remember when I first started run, running trail cameras back, now I'm going to tell you, seven, eight years ago, the, the standard was about 5 megapixels. If you had a 5 megapixel camera, you were in the money. Um, I do actually have a Bushnell that's 5 megs, and I have ran that camera, and I mean, I've ran the proverbial legs off that thing. I've ran the legs off that thing and it it just it just keeps going. Bushnell's a very good camera. The difference is this same camera and a Bushnell is about a, about 150 bucks. It's going to do just about the same thing. So I go ahead and I run these because I run a lot of cameras. If you're a guy, I can tell you right now, if you're a guy that doesn't really need to run a lot of cameras or a girl, and uh, you just want one or two cameras, I personally would go out and get the camera that sends it right to your phone. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to go out and, and buy 20, 30 cameras at 500 bucks a piece. It's just not, 
it's not going to happen. It's not in the budget right now. So these are the two cameras that I use. Um, they're very, very, very easy to set up. I mean, it, you know, pretty much at a second grade level, you know, on mode, get you the screen, hit it, you know, hit, hit enter. And, you, you know, you set your time, gives you the, um, pretty much everything you want to know. It does not give you barometric pressure. It does give you temperature. But other than that, I am also at a huge advantage in the sense that from my house, I can see both fields. Now I'm going to go set these cameras up. Join me. Okay, now in a perfect world, you'd come out here and there'd be perfectly growing trees exactly where you need them to set your cameras up to capture the pictures you want. What I've done here is I've, you just go to Tractor Supply or any place they sell tea, tea steaks. I'm out of breath. I, I'm going to tell you, um, about an hour ago I was out here and I saw a bear in the woods and he ran down to the stream down there and let out three roars. So I'm guessing it's a, a sow with, uh, with cubs. But anyways, I want to hurry up and get out of here. So I have one camera pointing south. I have one camera pointing north. And I'll show you the trails that I'm covering. Um, okay. They have a worn down trail coming out of here. Which I guess from here you can't really see it. Yeah. It's pretty beat down. And it just kind of comes right out of here. Now there's multiflora rows on each side. Deer don't care. They're going to come through here. And then over here. And I've split the difference with these cameras. I've Now this one I've noticed walking back here is slightly crooked. And not over far enough. But I will adjust that. This one here, it's lower. You want your trail cameras to be about three feet in the air. This one's about two and a half feet in the air. But to accommodate... I've taken a stick and it's made it a lot more level. Now that stick should last me all season. That's the cool part about it. Not the sticks are hard to come by, but they are in a clean field. And then here's your other beat. This is a real beat down trail here. I mean, they, they're coming out of here like thundering herds. Now some of you are going to go, well, wait a minute. Earlier in the video, you said that you're at a huge advantage in that you can see these deer from your house, which by the way, the house is over there about 250, 275, maybe 300 yards. These trail camera pictures, what they do is they give me nighttime intel. And if I'm not home, I'm not always home in the evening to look out and see what's going on. Lately, the trend's been, instead of seeing seven, eight, nine bucks out in the field at one time, combined both fields that I have, um, I'm not seeing them anymore. And I think the dispersion has been caused by the neighbors have corn up on the hill and it's coming in and and uh they're up there whacking the silk so good on them it'll let my crops grow and help recover but i consider this a triangulation in the sense that i've got one to the north one to the south and over on that telephone pole i've got one right there so just about anywhere they come out of the woods or go feed they're going to get a picture taken of them now August 21st first is not this coming Tuesday, it's the following, and I will do a trail camera Tuesday live. I don't know a time yet, I'll announce it a little bit, probably an hour or two beforehand, and uh, you'll get to see what's on these cameras. Now, I have not turned them on yet. Let's go ahead and do that and bounce out of here. You're probably saying, man, you saw a bear and you're back out there? Yeah, I'm, let's just say this, I'm well taken care of right now. Okay, so we everything's set. The one thing that I didn't go into too much about, I did talk about the battery life and running videos and how it chews them. But I will tell you this much too, just running still photos on these, um, anything below about 51% from my experience, and you're not going to get good flash at night. So you see, you see 50% on your on your batteries. Go ahead and give up the ghost and, and get some new batteries. But you can see here, I formatted this card. We're zeroed out, 100% battery life, 15 seconds and counting till pictures. So let me go ahead and close this up. Okay, that's closed up. 
and let's turn the bottom one on. Now, it usually takes one or two runs of these to get them absolutely perfect. Now, I'll come out here when I pull these cards uh, the first time, and I'll go, oh, man, this one needs to go up a little. Oh, man, I need a bigger stick or whatever. So this is, like I said, the predecessor to this one. And you can see the screen reading is the same. The card's been formatted, so it's all four zeros. And this can't, this card in particular can take 9,999 still shots. So in theory, I could leave it out here for weeks on end, you know. I won't just for the simple fact that we're six weeks out of hunt season and I want to know if these bucks are around or not. So that's what I do. This is just an, one little example of what I do. This is the video field. This is the field that I've been using for YouTube. It really works well for me. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. So that's it in a nutshell. Thanks for viewing. And hopefully I'll see you on Trail Cam Tuesday, August 21st. Maybe we'll see something good. Take care.